So, you know, there's this question of, uh, even though this is a DIY practice, mm -hmm. right? Do it yourself. What brings you to a video? What brings you to a book? Brings you to this sense of wonder. Like, I wonder if I could feel better. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's a state of consciousness that actually has peace. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of people out there that want to teach us, you know. Mm -hmm. How do we discern somebody who's useful to study with or work with and somebody who's not? One of the great questions that you yeah, have. Yeah. You know, my guidance on this was if, you, if you're with the people for a while and you start to change, stay with them. If you're with them and nothing's changing, then leave. Because uh, he said there, there is no good external markers. I mean, there's so many stories. There's this Kumari video, which was you know, just sent out to hoodwink people, fool people, and was successful. You can dress like somebody. You can have the right speak patterns. Uh, as we've, Neil Bison has shown, you can certainly learn the words, and you can parrot them back again. But it's the question of, you know, if everybody learns the words to Macbeth, say, some people say the words to Macbeth, and you can believe them. You know you can believe them. They're a good actor. They're good, you know, in that role. They, they act like that role. Other ones, they are Macbeth. They, they are Macbeth. Yeah. They become Macbeth. Yeah. The ones that aren't so good, you can say, "Oh, that's a terrible actor." Yeah. yeah. And that, to me, is maybe one way you can discern. I mean, can you see this person's body language? You see how they hold themselves. How they're, what do their eyes and face do? Uh, do you feel comfortable? I mean, do you feel around that person that you can trust them, or do you know the guy's trouble? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yes, so in other words, it's really not that complicated. And it really remains a DIY practice. In other words, you know, when you were saying before, if you spend some time with that person and you begin to change, mm -hmm. then good. And I, you know, you mean change for the better. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it's important to say, exactly. because, and, and that that means that at no point do you stop cultivating your own sense of inner awareness of like, do I feel like I'm becoming a better person? Or do I feel like I'm becoming a person that has a new system of moral precepts mm -hmm. and a new kind of consumer category, right? That there are people who are spiritual people and not spiritual people. And I start feeling that that's an important distinction. Or do I find myself becoming calmer, maybe a little quieter, a little bit kinder? Mm -hmm. Healthier is an interesting one I have found. Uh, and that, you know, but all of that is predicated on the idea that you can observe yourself and actually observe and say, hey, how am I doing? Mm -hmm. Now, it can also be, as you've pointed out many times in our experience, that particularly when you first start, your life can seem to get worse. But how does it get worse? Does it get worse in the sense that there are issues that are staring you in the face that you have to deal with and you can't just ignore them and put them into oblivion? Or does your life get worse because you become more judgmental, <laughs> more arrogant, more certain of your superiority in the world? Because those latter three things, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot when people get on a spiritual path, they become mm -hmm. very good at judging other people and they don't pay attention to their own nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really key to feel inside yourself too, when you're around these people. Are you doing this just because your friends all flock to this teacher? Do you flock to the most popular teacher, the one all your friends are seeing? And you go to this person and you hear them, whatever, discourse or workshop with them and leave with them. Do you feel if anything's changed? Does anything feel different in your consciousness now? Aside from the fact you checked off one more box, but yeah, I saw this person. I don't like this person. I like that person. Uh, are you really just playing the cafeteria shopping game? Or are you personally serious about this thing? Are you really invested in trying to change? If you aren't, then you may as well do this and then you do something else later. You just keep moving around. So there is a question of just how serious are you about this thing? Does it matter to you whether or not you change? Because you may not want to change. Well, and that makes it, uh, you know, easy, even on the first level, mm -hmm. of looking at the teachings and say, are these teachings that are, are actually designed 
for me to change? Mm -hmm. Or are these teachings designed for me to be able to repeat them and purchase more teachings of the same sort? It, it seems obvious, but that's a great deal of what seems to be out there in the spiritual yeah. marketplace. You know, we can just point to organized institutional religion and notice that most of it is just a series of prohibitions and proscriptions that are more or less impossible to live up to without further spiritual advancement. And so what is that designed? Is that designed to make you change? Or is that designed to put you into a subservient position vis-a-vis -vis an institution that you can never live up to? Well, I, th I think that's a, that's a very key mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. If you can look at their financial model, and you can see how's the financial model structured. I mean, is this all about them making more money? Is this all about them being the interpreter of this teaching for you? They can't, you can't trust yourself to interpret this. Only they can interpret it for you. Are there levels you have to proceed to at different cost values, different mm -hmm. price, price points? And at the end of this thing, are you going to get what you want? Are you just going to get a badge with four epaulets on it? I want that. I want the, <laughs> yeah, but why? No, no, I want the five epaulets. Oh, okay, badge. I'll talk you a little more for five epaulets. I've been waiting for it, by the way, Gary. You yeah, promised me I was going to get the badge. Later, later. <laughs> But, but you can just watch. Is this, is this really a money-making scheme? Is this yeah. like a Ponzi scheme that they're running here? Or is this, they're really interested in helping you? I mean, it doesn't have to be charge nothing. That's very much part of this limit. Yeah. And then we've talked before about how different the, the dynamic is if money starts changing hands. It really feels different, even with a farthing difference mm -hmm. in charge, mm -hmm. that you know, okay, something has been set up now between us, an expectation on your part because you paid a farthing for this, and so then I get a farthing, and I treat you a different way to get you come back and give me another farthing next week. So you can just watch the dynamic change and be a, feel yourself how that, that's working for you. Uh, is it really moving you forward? And how's the economy working out for the teacher? Is this all about the teacher making money or about you learning? And I think that all of this is predicated on the idea that there really is a moving forward. Mm -hmm. There is, I mean, th this needs to be said over and over and over again, that there really is a trajectory where you can move forward, you become more aware, you become healthier, you become happier. And um, because that can be tempted to say, well, okay, you know, maybe, you know, at least I have this, at least I have this spiritual practice that I have. I don't really seem to be going anywhere, mm -hmm. but at least I have it. I'm afraid of not having it. Um, but that kind of a holding pattern can last an entire lifetime. Oh, I have yeah. folks come to me who've done practice X for 10 years, 15 years. They say, but I'm not really getting any place. It's like, well, come on, really? Yeah. Yeah. How did you allow yourself to get trapped into a no-progress technique for a decade, a decade and a half? You know, why were you satisfied with that? Why couldn't you say, this is unsatisfactory, I will not accept this? Something has to be changing earlier. But well, as soon as you wake up, wake up and say, this has to be changing me some way or I should stop doing it. Right. Well, and, and, and if you think about it, it's strange because nobody would ever accept that, say, you know, like if you wanted to increase your fitness as a cyclist, right? So you say, okay, I want to train for uh, a longer ride. I want to be able, I can ride 20 miles an hour. I want to be able to ride 50 miles. Mm -hmm. And maybe I consult somebody or I look on a forum. <clears throat> Lots of good bike forums online. And there's advice there. And I follow some of the practices that are associated with that advice. And I can still only ride 30 miles. <laughs> so, you know, do I say, oh, well, you know, I better keep following these practices. Mm -hmm. That way someday, I'll, no, I will look and see, well, what alternatives are there? Is it mm -hmm. something to do with the bike? Is there something to do with my diet? Is there something to do with the way I'm riding? Do I need to drink more water? What is it? Right. You know, very problem-solving oriented approach. Whereas, and we have to take the same problem-solving oriented approach with this, saying, okay, well, you know, I've tried this technique. I see how, you know, maybe Buddhist scripture suggests that this is so, or Christian scripture, or any of the traditions. But I don't seem to be really getting <laughs> Nothing's any, anywhere, so I need to make an adjustment. Maybe the scripture was written for another time. Maybe the translation doesn't really make sense to me. Maybe uh, there's some very small aspect of the practice that mm -hmm. I'm not doing. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, that's the way in which it is always and totally DIY. To the extent, maybe a very quick heuristic that anybody can use is the extent that any teacher claims it's not DIY, 
then, you know, caveat on tour, right? Buyer beware. Yeah. Because if, if you suggest that it's not the DIY, you're suggesting that, you know, only through me can you get to the That's promised right. land. That's right. And the history of that idea is not it's a promising not, one. Not very promising. <laughs> it's been done for a long time in many religions for thousands of years. And if someone has to stand between you and the teachings, then you got to say, what, how good of a teacher are they if they can't somehow instruct me to learn how to learn this in a way I can do it myself, right. and benefit from myself, because they cannot be there every minute with you. Right. And imagine, you know, imagine there's a mountain, you know, beautiful mountain, Mount Whitney in California, yeah. or Mount Rainier, <clears throat> and then there's a path, and you, you can see this path, and you can't really see, it's got so many twists and turns in it, and so forth, and it's going up the steepest part mm -hmm. of the mountain, but they've got the toll booth right there yeah. <laughs> in front of it, and a huge line of people waiting in the toll booth, so much, so long, the people have actually forgotten that they're waiting in line <laughs> for a toll booth. And then you come along and you say, well, you know, I can just go around <laughs> yes, the toll booth. And, and, and actually, this line of ascent is much less steep and easier. Yeah. Look, look, there isn't a glacier field there. No. And look, there's, there's, no, there's, I don't yeah. think there'd be an avalanche on this. I can just, like, I can ride my bike up this side. Yeah. And to me, that feels like the analogy is uh, that, you know, oh no, you have to go this way, right. and because you have to go this way, you never get there. That's right. But if you actually use your own awareness, you say, okay, let me look at that mountain. How am I going to get up there? Yeah. Which doesn't mean you don't listen to other people when you're on the path. Mm -hmm. It just means you're always taking that advice and running it through your own evaluation of yeah. the situation. Yeah. Well, be a smart consumer. To yeah. Another point is there's so much around now of such varying quality. Be some use, be some discernment of some kind. Just be yeah. very careful and watch and see how quickly this does or doesn't work for you. If it doesn't work for you for months, do something else. And would you buy a used car from this person? <laughs> yes. <laughs> would you buy would you buy a used car from this person? <laughs> it's a good it's a good test. And if you don't think so, then, then uh, you wouldn't buy a spiritual practice. Don't, don't, don't buy a spiritual practice from them.